Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I'm delighted to be joined by Len McCluskey, the last of the great trade union barons. So, despite what I called you, you're not quite yet in the House of Lords, only a matter of, I'm sure, a matter of minutes. <laughs> um, if we could just start with, I suppose, some of your slightly contentious remarks, uh, which you repeated last week about Labour MPs who don't tow the line, you wouldn't regret seeing them uh, out of the party. Who did you have in mind in particular? Well, it wasn't a question of me wanting them out of the party, unfortunately. Well, out of their seats. Uh, well, unfortunately, as you know, uh, Robert, when you do pre-records, which the BBC did, they uh, very cleverly pick out uh, bits that give a distorted view. Had people seen the full interview, right. when I was specifically... Give us the context. When I was specifically asked the question, do these group, uh, this rump of mm. right-wing MPs, would I want them out of the party? My answer was no. I just like them uh, to be more supportive of right. the party. You know, Peter, uh, prior to the 2017 election, said that every single day he would work uh, against Jeremy Corbyn. Um, but he had the good grace following the 2017 election to say that he'd got it wrong. Now, many of the right-wing Labour MPs, and it's only a small rump of them, mm. continually criticised. They took Peter's line day in, day out. The first thing they thought about was how do we criticise and would, would their local parties, in your view, be right to deselect them if well, they don't start towing the line more or less immediately? Accountability has always been there within the Labour Party. Mm. There's always been trigger ballots for MPs. My view is that the, these particular MPs, there's nothing wrong with criticising the leadership if you have a particular view, but it should be less feral, uh, less hysterical and more constructive. And that way we will have a better chance of having a united party in order uh, to gain power. And that's what we want. We want a Labour government to give us a better Britain. Working people are desperate for something different out there. So my argument and my view and my message is just as you followed Peter before the election, follow him after the election and be a little bit more constructive about supporting Jeremy Corbyn. And, and on the issue of anti-Semitism, you described some of the uh, remarks by a Chris Resley or a, or, or, or a John McCormick or, or an Ian Austin where they say the Labour Party is too slow to crack down on it. You said they were smearing the leader. Do you regret? I mean, do you really think they were smearing well, Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn? You've only got to look at the uh, history of all of those particular MPs that I named. Every single issue that comes up, they not only criticise Corbyn, but they run straight out to the right-wing press, who are happy to give them a platform in order to attack but Corbyn. But there is an anti-Semitism problem within Labour, isn't the there? Issue, the issue of anti-Semitism needs to be dealt with. Shami Chakrabarti, the first thing that Corbyn did two years ago mm. was ask Shami Chakrabarti, an individual has the highest integrity, to do a report. It hadn't been implemented. In fact, Shami said only the other day that since Jenny Formby became the new General Secretary of the Labour Party four weeks ago, mm. she's done more than the previous administration have done for two years. She also said, literally just a, a couple of days ago, that it's a disgrace that the Ken Livingston case hasn't been settled. I think that's true. It, it, it should have well been settled. And, and that, should, should Ken be out of the party? Oh, that's a process that needs to but go through. What do you through. think? You must have a view. I do. I mean, What's let your me, view? Well, let, me, be out the party? let me say this. Yes. If, there was, uh, if there was rule in the party against stupidity, then he and lots of other people should have been excluded. <laughs> In because but in relation to because the... Because it was bizarre, and I said it at the time, what he came out with. I'm not interested in the historical sure. references. But the reality is there's a process. So I'm not judge and jury in that sense. The process has to go through. It needs to be done very quickly now. And I think under the new leadership of the Labour Party, we'll get to the bottom of this issue of anti-Semitism. But I reject the idea 
that my party, a party that I've been in for 47 mm. years, is a toxic Labour Party that is anti-Semitic and misogynist. That's just nonsense. And so I'm looking forward to dealing with these issues speedily and getting those anti-Semites. And if there's any Labour Party members watching your show, Robert, who are anti-Semites, my message is clear. Get out of my party. We don't want you. I mean, it looks like a misjudgment that Martha Rossimore signed that letter criticising the actions being taken against some individuals who were accused of anti-Semitism. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn should withdraw her support for her to become a peer, then? No, I think the reality is that, as, as normal in these circumstances, because of the feral nature of, I said, mm. the historical... Uh, the hysterical um, uh, atmosphere that is there, yeah. that people can say things. Look, I don't judge who Jeremy puts in the Lords or puts in his cabinet or anything else. What I know is that under the new uh, leadership of the Labour Party mm. uh, headquarters, these matters will be dealt with speedily and we can all then concentrate on what people are really interested in, which is decent jobs, homes for their kids and a future. No, and, and you mentioned misogyny, and obviously you're very focused on pay. Why was the gender pay gap in your union wider than the national average? It's dead simple. It's because... Uh, Is it because of you and your pay? It, it, because of the uh, fact that uh, my union has got 72% male, and we draw our office from our membership. So there is a proportion of uh, our officers within uh, the, uh, within our union who are male, and it distorts the figure. It, well, what but we so are, that sounds like there's a glass ceiling Robert, for women in your union, no, which you've got to do something no, about, haven't you? absolutely not. A glass ceiling at the top of my union. Well, no, I'll, no, but, if, but, but the if there top, are more women, I, if there are all men being paid more, we do, it's either illegal or we, there's a glass ceiling. Ah, but there, that's the whole point. My union is an equal pay employer. This yeah. is the most important so thing. So there must be a glass ceiling. This is the most important thing. Men and women doing the same job or job of equal value in my union. Union. It's, uh, it's a quality proof to our, our, our scheme, get the same pay. But at the top of my union, my senior team, 50% of them are women. There's no glass ceiling. And will you be replaced by a woman? Oh, who knows? The membership will make that decision when the time comes. And, and uh, finally, you, you're uh, doing your third term. You said you'd only serve... One, that makes your sort of attack on stale right-wing MPs a little bit disingenuous, doesn't it? <laughs> well, not really. The reality is, of course, when I first run, the law was such that you had to finish uh, at the age of 65. That law has changed, and as a result of uh, uh, people who uh, requested me to stay on, I stayed on, in, in the context of the political uh, you were situation. You were referring to the... You were just responding to what the people wanted. Absolutely. <laughs> man right, of the people, I think... Man of the might. people, as always. <laughs> I think Allegra might have one or two questions for you about the performance of the union in a, in a sort of slightly modern sense. But Indeed. lovely to see you and see you again soon, okay. I hope. Lord McCluskey, come over here. Oh, um, so we are yeah. ennobled oh, by Robert God, Preston. God, we are often down. told the young are a new generation of lefties fueling the rise of Jeremy Corbyn. Not everybody agrees, Len. Um, here we have... Uh, Liz Truss, Chief Secretary of the Treasury, she said recently, I don't believe young people are suddenly Karl Marx reading crypto communists. <laughs> They're Uber riding, you get you, you intellectual bedfellow, Liz Truss. <laughs> They're Uber riding, delivery eating, freedom fighters. Well, we thought we would take a look at whether or not she is right with the help of da 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 da. It's geek of the week. OK, so, um, top geekery this week from the Ofcom market research team. Please, Ofcom, do remember this in future when we get in trouble. Um, they have crunched for us, probably caused by you, uh, they've crunched for us the percentage of smartphone users who use various different apps. And as you can see, run away in the lead, 18 to 24-year-olds, 28% of them are using Uber. And then Just Eat, which is uh, food delivery, uh, quite a lot of them are using Just Eat. It's clearly in the lead in the 25 to 34-year-olds. But nonetheless, they're using lots and lots of apps. Let's look at how unions are doing. Not so well. It's almost completely reversed. This is the percentage of employers who are members of a trade union. And as you can see, Len, you've got 18 to 24%. Just 8% of them. That's pretty terrible, huh? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should uh -huh. be better. It should be better. <laughs> and then you can see lots and lots in the, the age group 50 plus. Um, and you have an app. Where's the app? There's our app there. Okay, good. There we go. <laughs> now, you've. You, you, oh, okay, that wasn't supposed to come on immediately. This is a review of your app because you've got 1.5 million uh, use, members, but then you've got lots of people who use your app who are not particularly impressed. This is, this is a fair reflection of the kind of reviews. Um, and here you can say, if you lot can't fix a simple app, what chance have you got of sorting my workplace problems out? <laughs> How does that make you feel? Well, obviously, it makes me feel that we've got to do better. And we are. We're in the process of digitalising our union. I've got working parties making uh, all kinds of different recommendations. So we're going to get better. But, Why so uh, few uh, 18 Electra, to 24 year olds? Well, because of the nature of the economy in which we live. You know, this precarious zero hour uh, economy that, the, uh, that this government has created. But, Allegra, let me just say this I don't know about young people being crypto communists. What I do know is that young people are fed up with this stale government that gives them no hope. <laughs> and they, they, are looking, <laughs> they are looking for something Robert, different. Robert Peston can, can is can heckling. The presenter so, is heckling. So, so, but, but, so, but also, young people are overwhelmingly in favour of staying in the single market or indeed many of them want to stay in the EU. You're still sitting on the fence on all of this, aren't no, you? No, not at all. The British people have voted to leave the European Union and therefore you have to respect that. But what Labour does, I mean... But you are that, not committed but, to a soft but, Brexit. You are not but, committed no, that's personally not to staying is, in the single market. No, that is you? absolutely not true. And I've just heard... It is true. Nick, I've just heard Nicola Sturgeon coming out with a load of nonsense about Labour being divided. Labour isn't divided divided on this point. <laughs> Labour is the only party that speaks for the whole of the eyes. nation. <laughs> Labour wants access to a frictionless... Uh, access, uh, not membership of the single party. Access. Well, you can't have access, you can't have membership if you're leaving the European Union. Ac you can just, rejoin via Robert, the EEA. Robert, Robert, listen to me. Access to the single market and a customs union will protect jobs, investments, that's what we want. It speaks to the 48%, to the 52% who voted leave, mainly for two reasons. Then, Peter, mainly then, for two reasons. Peter. I'm glad you've said this, and I, I'm strongly behind you. The question is, how would a Labour government get access to the single market without being in it? By negotiating. We need a negotiation with Brussels okay, but... that will allow us access... Uh, uh, frictionless access yeah. to the market. But then that's the same as the government's yeah. position. That's what the Prime no, no, Minister no, but, says. But, 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 Peter, you know better than anyone, the government at the moment are negotiating between themselves. They're not oh, negotiating with Brussels. Oh, no, that, that's They're true. in a mess. No, that's true, Len, but I'm sorry, I've got to press you on this. There is a negotiation to be had between a Labour government and the EU27 about the terms on which we would leave the European Union but still have some economic advantage, you know, within the single market. But the only way we're going to get a proper negotiation with them is if we start from a position of being in the single market and then negotiating no, Peter, the terms, Peter, not I, by being outside it. Peter, I disagree with you fundamentally. We can get tariff-free access to the single market and a customs union as opposed to the customs union. I want to pick up this. Yeah. I want to pick up this. a very important point. You've said tariff-free for goods. What about uh, services that represent 86% of our economy? And That's nothing uh, to do with tariffs. No, the reality <laughs> is it's about a negotiation. What happened here? And remember, we're nearly two years on from the referendum vote. What happened here is that the Prime Minister and the government set the wrong tone in well, negotiations. I agree. But, uh, no, I must it's make a very very what, 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 what I find interesting, exactly which I want to put to you, Sarah, is, yes. curiously, I would say that a lot of what Len McCluskey says is actually quite close to what the Prime Minister yeah, exactly. says. And, and you would be more sympathetic to Peter's it, position, wouldn't you? I mean, exactly. He's saying exactly what the Prime Minister... That's what we would all like, is to have access and be able to create our own terms. But the reality is we're not going to get that, and that's why I think there's a strong case for joining the EEA and EFTA and having a frictionless customs well, So we're going to come back. Unfortunately, we've got to go into the break.